people. It's an icy day in North Texas, so what else is there to do but uh, do a little air testing, not testing for depth or anything. I do have a pretty good selection here of, uh, of silver jewelry and only one gold ring. Unfortunately, I sold a couple, a couple of gold rings at the conversion to the new year, uh, but they were all about the same VDI as this on most systems. And, you know, I'm not going to get a good cross-section of gold here uh, just because uh, I just don't have a great cross-section. I, I, you know, I do a lot of the detecting around uh, fields and you tend to run across a chunky men's ring, I mean sports fields. So you tend to run across chunky men's rings that ring a little high. So I'll just run this by and take a look at it. Uh, it might give me some small guideline, but as we all know, uh, Detecting for gold is more like prospecting. It's it's sort of a focused focused crapshoot. So uh, I will uh, I will uh, be doing that right now. And I have a good selection of silver here. I have earrings. I have chains. I have baby rings. I have uh, large uh, chunky men's rings and various other rings. And I also have a couple of silver chains, a silver chain or two. So that's going to be the basis of my test today. So I'm just going to get a cross section. I'm going to get types. I'm not going to do every piece. I'm just going to get types. I'm going to get a, an earring, a chain, and then various uh, sizes of silver rings, small, medium, large, baby ring, etc. So it's not going to be one of those interminable tests where everything I found over the next two, last two years is going to be in this test. All right, uh, let me uh, crank this up and uh, we will see what I get. All right, this is gonna be the basis of my test. I didn't bring the gold ring over, but the gold ring will also be used. But this is a very, very thin, look like pounded silver ring. It is it is uh, labeled as a uh, sterling. Uh, I have a, a, a very small baby ring here. I have a small Star of David ring. I have a, I have an earring. I have a, a sort of a chunky chain and then a couple of reasonably chunky men silver rings and then a another relatively small ring with a little uh, jewel of some kind in it. So that's what my test is going to be. So I'm gonna set the camera up so you can see the uh, the display for the uh, for the TID or the VDI and uh, we'll get going. All right, uh, I have got the uh, Knock the Force course set up. Uh, I'm just going to show you the VDI display. I will be dragging uh, whatever I'm going to do a reading on. Uh, and I'm also going to do a reading on this nickel I'm, uh, in front of the screen before I show it. Uh, and then I'm going to pass it in front of the coil and we'll see what it shows. All right, I have to reposition that a little bit. Here we go. I'm going to start with the nickel since uh, the nickel it seems to be the uh, the standard for measuring potential gold, even though only a small subset of rings fall in that nickel category. So I'm just going to go take that nickel, which I've just shown you, right here, and I'm going to bring it in front of the coil. Uh, the little background noise is uh, the EMI in this room, so let's just take the nickel. I think that's 5756. Fortunately, the screen I'm using on this gives me a mirror image, so I'm having to sort of uh, <laughs> translate in my mind exactly what it's showing. So I'm showing about 5756 on the nickel. All right, now let's start with the silver. I'm gonna go with the big chunky men's ring. This one is very big and chunky. Let me show this, I'm sorry. This is a very thick, sterling ring and I'm getting a ninety-three ninety-four on it. This ring is uh, also in that category but it is a little bit thinner. Let's just see if there's much change. Actually no, still the 94. Alright, this is the uh, this is the little earring I found earlier. It's one of my pride and joys. I was actually able to find the designer who died in the early 60s, I mean late 60s. So uh, let's try this. It's a very small little sterling 
earring. Well, not very small. It's about the uh, tip of my finger, maybe, in size. All right, here we go. Let's try this. Okay, high 70s, 80s. All right, another, another, uh, well, my first, my uh, first uh, small uh, child or very tiny lady's ring. Has a little jewel in it. Let's try this. It's also reed sterling. I got an 85. This is another very tiny ring. A little chain on it. My little Star of David ring. Uh, and I'm going to try this one as well. Let's just see what it reads. Eighty-five, I believe. Eighty-six. All right. Now this is the very, very. It looks like it's a homemade ring. Somebody beat it out of silver. Somebody with a little more skill than I've got. But it's very, very thin. It does read sterling on it. When I first got it, I thought it was going to be one of the aluminum or tin rings. But it does read sterling. So I'd be interesting in, interested in seeing exactly how it reads. When I quit dropping it. <laughs> Here we go. Low 70s. And the tiniest ring I've found so far, it's a little... B, so I assume it's a boy's ring if it's not an initial. And it, it, it's probably an early 20th century, uh, very, very ornate, and it does not have a, a sterling categorization on it. So I think that makes it almost late, late, uh, late uh, 19th, early 20th century. But it does have a hallmark on it, so it is silver. So I'm going to run this through, run this past. Eighty-two, pretty good substantial count on that. And here we go. The thing that drives a lot of detectors crazy. It's a ring, but it's a it's a, it's a ring. It's a, a bracelet, uh, a chain. But it is very chunky, so I expect to get a pretty good reading off of it. But we'll see. I'm going to swing it just basically like this first and see what I get. It's a chain, so it's jumping around the 70s pretty extensively. Now I'm just going to pile it up in my hand and try it this way. It's all over the place. Yep, that's the wonder of chains. And finally, uh, we remember what the nickel showed about mid-50s. I'm going to do the, uh, the 10 carat ring. I still have not found the owner, but I'm still looking. Uh, and uh, I would not sell this until I, you know, until I exhausted all attempts and don't know when that'll be. And uh, just, uh, I'm just going to run this sort of chunky 10 carat class ring in front. Let's see what it says. Eighty-one. That's a pretty high reading. It's definitely 10k. That's a pretty high reading. So uh, yeah. You know, that gives me some idea when I get in the 80s, which is usually what I consider the junk range in, in this, in, on this particular detector, I might need to pay special attention. I always dig them, so I don't have to miss anything, I don't think. But, uh, you know, that's nice to know. It, it, it's almost in the range with some of the uh, smaller silver pieces. In any case, uh, that's all I've got. I just wanted to get an idea of that. Probably I should have done that before I actually started using it. But I had good success just out there winging it. But, you know, this gives me some idea of what the range of uh, potentially uh, precious metals would be. And uh, the, the mighty nickel also gave me the possible, at the 57, 56, at the possible low range of what the, uh, not low range, just a mid to low range of what the, uh, of what gold might be. In addition to the this gold ring, which is on the high end, and gives me the 80, of course. All right. That's all I've got, and I will uh, attempt to stay warm. <laughs> Here we have a little ice in Texas. Uh, this is uh, uh, late February uh, 2015, so uh, let's just hope it doesn't last long, and I can get back out there and hunt. Uh, you guys up north, this is the blizzard of 2015. I'm sure it'll be known as, so I know you're still digging out, and I wish you uh, 
a speedy return to the uh, detecting fields as soon as possible. This is Texas Tiger Diggs, and I will talk to you later.